Thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, we're going to be looking at creating a very, a quite simple collage using layers and layer blends. I like to do these ones because if you are a beginner in Photoshop, seeing an end result as you progress, I think is a good way of learning. So for that reason, I have included the images and I'll put a link below to the images that you can download and follow along for yourself. The type of imagery I create might not be for everyone's cup of tea, but it is the process of learning that is there. If you'd like to get your teeth into something a little more complex, I'll put a couple of videos here that I would recommend trying. And again, the images are there for you to download. Let's dive right in. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is create the document size for this image. And if I go in here, you'll see I already have a few of these saved. And one of them that we're going to be working in is IMAX, which is 4096 by 2160, 300 pixels per inch and 16 bit RGB color. And that's the one I'm going to use for this. And I'm simply going to, you see my custom background is gray. I'm going to click there and go white and then click create. And this is the image we have at the moment. So if I select the move tool up here and I'm going to drag all of my images in one by one. I'm not going to file open and bring them in. I'm going to drag them in and they will appear as a smart object. So the first image we are going to bring in is the texture layer. And this is going to be the base layer of this document for us. And I'm just going to move it over so that it snaps to the side. And as you can see, it's moving quite a bit here. So to engage snap, go to view snap this is handy in certain documents and in others it is not so handy so you can go in and turn that on and off whenever you want the next image we're going to bring in is the building and we're just going to drop that there and take it across to there and you'll see that it snaps against that what i'm going to do with this one is simply lower the opacity in this just to there, remembering that at any point we can go back in and adjust any of these whatsoever. The next image I am going to bring in is the cyborg. If I just click OK there, I'm quite happy with that there. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go into select subject so that it ensures that it selects every part of this or nearly every part of that and then we're going to edit it from there. But to make sure you've got a really accurate edit, I'm working in a PC on a Mac, it's under File, but we go down to Preferences and go into Image Processing and ensure that it is on the cloud, which is more detailed and refined results. I think the default setting is Device, but you should work most of the time if you want really detailed results in the cloud and then simply click OK. From here with the cyborg layer selected, simply go up to Select, Subject, and this will process on the cloud. And you can see that it is a really, really good selection with this. If you want to try it without on your device, you will see the difference. So we can simply go in and click down here and create a mask from this, but we want to go in and refine it further. Perhaps we don't, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to get into any of the selection tools, object selection, quick selection, or magic wand, and then just simply click select and mask. I have my background color changed to green, because I just find that one easier working on. And yes, it still looks as if it's a really decent selection for this. So let's just go in and decontaminate the colors just to see what happens. There's an even better selection. I'm not too worried about what's going on in here these cables going off into nothing that looks okay for me so we want to output this to a new layer with a layer mask sometimes you have the default selection on but we want to get down here and then just simply click ok once again so there you go you can see that it's cut that out the next layer we are going to work with or should i say we are going to bring in 
is the portrait. And I'm, again, I'm going to leave that at that. And as you can see, each time I bring one of these in and drag it from my other desktop, it comes in as a smart object indicated by this icon here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move that across over the cyborg and I'm going to choose a blending mode that allows me to see both. And in this case, for this image, it is lighting. And that gives me the effect I'm after. But I want it to cover more of the cyborg. So if I just press Command or Control and T, that allows me to do free transform. And then I can drag this up and down in size to whatever I want for this. But I'll be honest, I want this one quite big. So I'm going to go around about there. Perhaps even bigger so that it goes off the screen there or touches the bottom of the screen there. And I'm quite happy with that as it is. This is a relatively quick compositing exercise using blending modes. So the next one I am going to bring in is the shark. And as you can see, we've got this big fierce shark here, which I am going to go back in and go select subject. And the selection for this one is really good, but we will go back in and we'll go select the mask just to check. Everything in there looks okay. Let's decontaminate colors to see what happens. Yep, that looks okay to me. Click OK. Now, I don't want the shark above. I want the shark behind the cyborg copy. So I'll basically just drag it down to around about there. And this layer here I don't need. So I'm going to drag it and put it in the bin. If you don't want to delete it just now, just leave it where it is. With this shark layer selected, again, Control or Command and T, grab a corner and just scale it down to whatever size you want. This is entirely up to you for this image. As I say, the idea of this is just to put it together to allow you to see how it all goes together. For me, I quite like the fact that the dorsal fin there wraps around this. So I'm going to leave it at that. The next one we're going to drag in, or should I say the final one that we're going to drag in for now is the jellyfish. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it to the side so you can see exactly what's happening with this. Excuse me. Again, select subject. We should get a really decent selection with this one. And we have again, but if I'm going to check it, select and mask. And let's decontaminate colours, which I don't think will work too well with this. And it did, actually. So I'm going to leave it. There we have this one here. Take the Move tool, move it back across, and place it wherever you think you want it within this. Just a bit there just now. And so we've now a couple of things to do with this, but that's quite quickly put together. One of the ones that we're going to do, and we'll do this in the top layer, the shark, for example, I don't need, because I have my shark in here now. I can delete my shark. And for whatever reason, the screen recorder stopped recording. And so there are two new layers here, and I'll show you and talk you through both of these new layers. It was simply just to save me re-recording this part. The first layer is a gray layer created using the rectangular marquee tool and filled with a hex color of 84, 84, 84 and with a layer blend set to divide. The second is a mask created over the texture layer again using the rectangular marquee tool and once the rectangular marquee tool is drawn over I simply created the mask button. Should you get the reverse effect of what you want, simply go onto the mask itself and press Control and I. So I have this straight edge here that I don't actually quite like, so I want to blend that in a bit further. And how I'm going to do it is I'm going to get into the texture layer here. I'm going to take the gradient tool. The gradient tool in white, as you'll see it's black just now, but that's simply because the foreground colour is black. If I change that to white and I go back in here, you will see that the basics gradient tool is white. So I'm then going to go in here, 
hold down shift and just drag that. I don't want it to disappear totally like that. I just want it to disappear a tiny bit. Just to about there. Now I'm happier with that. But now we have this layer, which gives me a line here. So I'm just going to drag that back into about there. That I am much happier with. We have a fade here and a line through here. Next thing is we are going to take this layer here and copy it up once, which is a cyborg layer. And then I'm going to delete by dragging it to the bin the mask for it. Delete so we have this. And basically what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to create an effect with it that I think will work for this image. So using that layer, I'm going to go select, subject, simple as that, control or command and J, and then I'm going to delete this layer. So we've got that selection up here. With this selection, I'm going to go filter, blur, motion blur, and it gives me that effect. Now that is the effect that I am after for this. Now I can adjust the distance, but that's the effect I'm after for this. So I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to hold down shift, and move that to about, just to about there. Maybe even get away with taking it further. No, I'm going to take it to about there, and that's OK. So from here, we are going to try a blending mode with this. And let's go for screen. That works OK. Lighten works OK as well. So lighten a screen. And let's just go for lighten. So we now have this effect over here. And if I turn that on and off, you can see it's quite a prominent effect. We can exaggerate it by holding down Control and T. Hold down Shift. And exaggerate it further. This is entirely up to you for this and then click OK once you're happy. Now everything's sitting there for me. I'm quite happy with this small exercise but what is missing is the face of the portrait is disappearing too much into it. So with this we are going to add a couple of layers. The first one being a curved layer. We're going to clip it to the layer below which is the portrait and we're going to adjust this just slightly. I am thinking about there for it. Perhaps I'll take the mid-tones a bit there, a bit there, to provide him with more presence within this image. Let's go now for a hue saturation. And let's just saturate him. So we're going to click this here, which clips to the layer below. And let's add just a touch of saturation to this. Now, it might be too much because you can see his ear begins to appear. So maybe just about four there. I can add a mask and get rid of that, which I would do just by simply clicking on the layer, adding a mask. B for brush, and I want to erase this, so I'm ensure that the colour on the brush is black. So let's now just add some text, because we can, and we've got a massive blank space there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to click in the top layer, and then hold down Shift, Control, Alt, and E. And that combines all of these layers below into one layer. And if you want to tidy up your layers, simply click the layer below this one, the bottom layer containing an image, and just click in the folder option. So everything that we have is now in there. And if I turn them both off, you'll see that. Right, so... I'm also going to lock this one so that I can't move it. And working in the top layer, we are now going to put in text. And I'm just going to click here. Justification of my text is up here. So I'm going to do that. And I've got Agency FB in bold. If I want to choose another text, I can go in and take any one at all. Let's just work with impact. So I'm just going to type something in here with the Caps lock on, learn, return, create, turn, explore. So there we have that there. Now we can change the justification of this at any point at all, but you will notice 
that it only moves the line that it's on. So if you want to change the justification, select it, which can actually be selected by double clicking on the T icon here for text, and then just go in and change the justification that you want. So for this example, let's leave it at that. Let's also just click OK. Let's also have a quick look. I'm going to leave the text at that size, but let's also have a quick look at spacing of the text. If I double click the text and then I go up here, my character and my properties appear. Now the spacing in between the text is here. So is it in between the lines? So you can take that and muddle it all together, or you can make it even spacing, and in this case, it always goes to auto, but you can change that there. And the spacing of the actual letters themselves, you can change by using that one. So you can do whatever you want with these. And that's just the most simplistic way of working with it at the moment. So let's just go, okay. So I'm going to leave that there. I quite like that there. It's just a nice distance there away from this and everything's looking fine. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer here, which is the one that we combined, take it above there. Now, that obliterates the text from view because it's the layer above and it has a white on it. What I'm going to do is just in between the two of them, if I hold down Alt, and move the mouse slightly, you'll see that the clipping arrow appears. And then just click in between the two. Now we don't see any difference at the moment. What we have to do is, just to make life easy, turn, on, turn off auto select layer and just drag. And what that is actually dragging is this layer here because we have this layer selected. So we can then drag that across there that there wherever we think it should be. Perhaps I want to change the colour of it. I can add another hue saturation layer and again clip that to the layer below and then simply colourise it. So we have that and if I just move through my colours using the hue I can take it to one that I want. I can increase the saturation of it, or I can darken and lighten it. It's entirely up to you what you do with this. I'm going to leave this one with that just now, and I'm going to call this image complete. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it just lets you see how with a little manipulation in Photoshop, images can come together quite quickly. Now, although if you have downloaded the images that I've used, feel free to try the same type of techniques and experiment with your images. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.